The trouble with old steam locomotives. This is part seven. Mounting and piping the steam chime whistle. Before I did the whistle job though, I put the parts from the water gauge and the clack valve into a small tub of cellulose thinners, also known as lacquer thinner. And just like on the opening sequence, here they are. With the help of a small brass wire brush, most of the paint's gone. Although looking at the state of the silver soldering, I think I will probably repaint them. The silver soldering is not that bad really, but it's not as good as you find on commercial things like this. This chime whistle was made by my friend Chris English at CME Engineering, and as usual, if you want any of these products, they're available from Blackgates Engineering, because CME Engineering is a trade-only supplier. I'm going to make a mounting bracket for this whistle, so I can mount it on the spectacle plate. I'm using a piece of square brass, and here's where I need to cut it. I've cleaned up the end of the first piece of this square section brass, just using the belt sander. And here I'm marking the approximate position when I'm going to drill and thread a hole to accept the thread on the whistle. I think when I drill the hole though it won't be exactly in the middle of this, it'll be further towards the front. So to make sure that I remember that, I'm scribing another line and then I'm going to cut this piece off on the bandsaw. The blade on the bandsaw is a really horrible blade. There's nothing wrong with it really, it was my own fault, I freely admit this. In one of my recent videos I changed the blade on the bandsaw because the old one was very blunt, but where the video went wrong, I removed the old bandsaw blade and put it on one side. Then I opened the packet and got another bandsaw blade out of that. Then the phone rang and I stopped filming. After the phone call I came back to the job, took the old bandsaw blade and screwed it up and threw it in the bin. Then I realised I'd just screwed up the new one. And that's why this new blade on the machine looks a bit wonky. Wonky or not, the new blade is much sharper than the old one was and in no time at all I have a small metal block which I'm going to use to mount the whistle. In this clip you can see that I'm using some lathe tools to pack up the brass block and here I'm drilling a hole through it using a centre drill to start with and by the way I'm not drilling all the way through. After the centre drill I used a tapping size drill for 5 16ths by 32 which is two imperial drill sizes less than 5 16ths of an inch. And if you can't be bothered googling it it's 9 64ths of an inch. It's most important to go past the halfway point, but not right through the other side. Although if you did it wouldn't be any big problem, you could just use a blanking plug underneath the whistle mounting. In this clip I'm threading the hole 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. This is a plug tap and goes right to the bottom of the drilled hole. This is where the whistle will fit. Now it's time to clamp the block in the machine vise with the end part uppermost. Really I should mark this out, but I'm using my calibrated eye to make sure it's in the middle. I'll just check it with a ruler. I'm making a very fine adjustment and now I'm checking the measurement the other way. This looks okay, it's not a precision item but it would look really poor if this hole wasn't exactly in the center. And once again the process is identical except first of all I use the center drill, then I use a small drill, this is one eighth of an inch in diameter to go through the center. If I use a full size drill like this there wouldn't be any thread left at the end to mount the whistle. But I am drilling part of the way in so I can thread the hole 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. It's a very simple and very logical job, but sometimes you have to think about it. Just like changing the bandsaw blade. Here's the almost completed whistle mounting and it's time to test it with the whistle. I've shortened the thread on the whistle because I don't want it to screw in and partially cover the small hole down the centre. This type of whistle needs quite a lot of volume of steam to work. Now it's into the outer part of the workshop and I'm using the one inch belt sander to carefully shape the block on the bottom. I'm holding it with the whistle which will save me burning my fingers because the part obviously gets hot. Once I'd done this part of the job I removed the whistle and then it was a case of dipping it in water all the time to keep it cool whilst I rounded the other end. Now I've screwed the whistle into the other hole in the mounting bracket so I can polish it up. Now the mounting bracket looks like this and the whistle is only just in the right position. I hadn't realised that the centre rings are slightly larger. What I need now is a mounting to go through the spectacle plate. So I'm just turning down a commercial centre union fitting. Yes I could have made this from stock from a piece of hexagon but it's much quicker to keep a good stock of centre union fittings once again made by my friend Chris English at CME Engineering and available from Blackgates Engineering. I do it this way just because it's quicker to go into a box and pick out the fitting, just turn a bit of it off and fit it to your finished product. 
I'm holding the centre union by the threads so I'm taking very light cuts. All I have to do now is apply some Loctite 542 and screw this fitting into my bracket. Before that though I'm going to enlarge the existing hole in the spectacle plate. And now the double union in the hole with some Loctite 542 applied to it. All I have to do using a socket on my screwdriver is screw this firmly into the bracket. And now when I apply some compressed air I bent a piece of 3 16 of an inch diameter copper pipe and silver soldered some coned unions on the end of it. The pipe needs a good clean so it's time to go into the acid bath with it and at the same time I'm tying together all of the fittings to go into the acid bath. I'm using the normal silicone rubber tubing for this, it's really good stuff. And I'm just stringing all of the fittings together and now it's time to visit the acid bath. This is in the darker outer part of my workshop. And here's the acid bath. Well, really, it's a plastic dustbin full of kettle descaler. And that's it for this episode. Time to let the acid do its stuff. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.